go. Let's see what they can do on Mirage. See if we can get a better version of Nip. Of course, the pick of phase is going to be strong for them. They already won NIP's map pick. Ready for the 2-0. Loser is eliminated from Masters. Yeah, that one's going to sting. Winner continues on the journey of the lower bracket. Let's get into this one. Don't blink, Mohan. Little Glock tap. That one shot, that one shot serves as the warning sign for what is the all-in from FaZe Clan. But they haven't checked Hompus. He's got that back corner. Good for the one execute. But then he falls. Twist. He's back into the marketplace. That reload. A little awkward reload there as he spams through smoke. That definitely could have cost him. Didn't seem like he was ready for another follow-up fight. So FaZe, four versus two in the post plant. Holding it back from a distance, and with Cold Zera having gotten his hands on the USP, it all gets easier. Knock, trying to clutch with what he can, but he's already down to the 50% HP. Little bit of damage back the other way. This one is done for. FaZe Clan pick up first pistol. We're seeing a lot less action towards A these days, a lot more. It's a lot more even towards the B site. There's a lot of memes for the B site players, you know, how you're... You're basically just sitting there for fifth, for five rounds, and then one one team will rush, and then because you haven't warmed up, you'll just get destroyed. They'll get the bomb down. You can't retake. But these days, there's a lot more hits towards B, so we're seeing a lot more ladder and doubling up on B, ladder room control, um, and holding on to retake positions. We saw this be a problem for G2 yesterday. They figured it out ultimately, um, but yeah, on the A site, it's retakeable, so players can be on flex more often now. Phase, they are setting up for the full A attack this time. It's it's an anti-force buy. I think they know that NIP are going to try to buy into this, but they've got a connector split coming as well. Molly's go deep to prevent anybody from throwing themselves through the smoke. And for the moment, that's not the plan. Plopsky, he sat back, but this could cost him because Rain's going to come around the jungle corner. And sure enough, he starts to unravel this A site. But just because he kills the player inside of jungle doesn't mean the threat is gone. There are still three CTs within the A site and Hompus comes over with a crucial kill. You can't help but feel like maybe they were going to rock that bomb back with the position of Rain, but having lost him, they decide to come back to A. Now things really get scary because in that little minute moment, we actually had Nock get ever closer to the ramp. He is right on the exit of it and he's got two T's ahead of him. Still a player underneath the balcony. And then as well, we have that scout still in the mix with Twist back on ticket, ready for these opening duels, but it's Nock in with just the one frag off of the Deagle. So they've killed three people at this A site. Do they anticipate a fourth? Rez, he is sitting here, he hears Nico, he gets that first headshot, doubles up on the damage, Hompus lends a helping hand, but Cold Zera brings it back, and the one versus one, Cold versus Hompus, Deagle versus AK, 10 seconds left over, and Hompus is gonna take a bunch of damage, but the grenade does just as much, and Cold, he's gonna plant this, he gets it in. Now the retake has to happen, Hompus needs the headshot, and Cold Zera's giving it to him, the chances are there, but he moves. He doubles back to the side of triple, and he takes the head clean off. It's FaZe Clan converting, despite the best efforts of that A stack. And that's why Nip's always scary, of course. You know, that was actually a really nice A split to start things off. Getting rain in the window, flanking the connector player, taking advantage of the fact that Nip don't want to play mid on a force up, and then using a small fake to also commit to A as well, holding on to all these positions in case they push. So they did their best to get a lot of information, opening kill as well. And now Phaser out to mid it is an easier round than the last, but a lot of great damage done there for Nip that'll count uh, as we move forward in this half. Easy dealing with the catwalk play. Nothing at all here for ninjas. So solid conversion from Phase. This is going to be the 3 0 start. Hump is lucky to be alive as he takes further damage. Maybe a reposition will do him some good. We did see the banger through the murder hole just last round, but he disengaged. Instead, trying to find Brokey. Yeah, anything anything that he can get, of course. Uh, in uh, this round, nobody actually saved properly for the AWP. In fact, Twist is, looks like he's making a an adjustment. He's going to be buying the op glass cannon. I wonder why he didn't save properly to buy this op. Everybody else will have the money to work with but yes yeah, spending a lot of money on that second round takes out of this one susceptible to grenades 
really going to be situational to see if this matters at all. They're not going to be playing with the consideration that he is Glass Cannon. It just might incidentally affect the round if he eats some damage. Whoa, see this heavy B lane from the CTs? They're not getting information fast enough. Nope. They don't have the information, but maybe they've got the kills. Oh, knock. He just lets that first one in, but Emas is going to clear the closer corner. Rez, he has managed both of the frags here, helping out very well with what was the commitment from FaZe. Now they hold off for just the moment, bringing a player in from T-Spawn. They want to come in on ramp. Issue is that bomb. It is down in the dirt, and so they can't go back fully without it. We see ninjas trying to move over, cool. and they do so successfully. Rez, excellent kill versus Cold Zera. This is the one-man hold here on the A site, and it's not going to get any easier for FaZe. They're just going to wait, hope somebody walks into the scope of Brokey. But so far, it's Rez on for the ace. Yeah, you might actually put it together. Tetris play here. Tetris looking for another fight. The exact same position. He's running low on ammo. Oh, he's getting pushed to the limit. Head tries to be ducked, and Nico still finds him. Well, it's a much better situation for FaZe already. Yes, sir. Nico's going to take that off. Also takes the high road. If he can deal with the player towards Ticket, then they can just turn attention onto Connector in order to make this cross. But they've got 20 seconds left to do it, and still no CT gives them the peak they need. Nico, he's going to keep them into Ticket as that bomb goes down. Molotov starts to fluster the post plant. Nico in the open, still able to get away, but doesn't land that shot. It could have made a world of difference. Now he's going to go forward. No scope headshot into office. That's just unreal. And Brokey, well, he's looking to do this 1v2, but Plosky takes him down, and we've got the ninjas on the board. There's where the damage mattered a lot. They dropped the Molotov on onto default after forcing this specific plant. There was no other way they could they could put the bomb down except for CT spawn with Nico covering it. So Incendiary calls it out. The damage counts for something in the retake. And although it comes marginally close, of course, with the enough players to trade, they keep that man advantage alive and win the round. And uh, yeah, that's this is a this is a great round here from Res to start things off. Of course, we looked at that mini map. There's two over towards B, one on Cat as well. I think there's three in total, basically committed to the site. They were far rotates from A, and uh, and and Phase tried to take advantage of that by playing a contact play out of Palace. It was actually a perfect move by Phase, met only by, the, of course, the talent of of Res to pick up the slack there for uh, Knock. Whoa. You do not want to be running A without palace control in this situation. Yeah, this could really come back to bite them. They're going to have to deal with the ramp flank and a palace player. And still, we've got knocked back here on ticket. So this is ninjas in a perfect position to just encapsulate phase plan on the A site. They're going to desperately try for the plant and they will get away with it. Now there's this weird world where maybe Nico comes in from the other side of the map, but I don't know, he is too far gone. Maybe if it was an underpass to connector type play, but even as he throws himself through the window, Twist finds his first kill. Ninjas, and two rounds, right in a row. And that looks like Twist knowing exactly what strats come in their way. So that's a beautiful round from NIP to call out all the positions. Yeah, this is it's actually perfect. The two players in Palace, one hangs back, one big flanks, player in Palace takes his time. A ramp or a CT spawn player hits the op shot as they're looking to clear under balk. Yeah, coming out full A ramp, you know, there's a lot of holes in that. If there's anybody even on the balcony to push into halls when the X cube comes out, that's a liability. So interesting choice by FaZe to try that. But NIP will have uh, a, a round where they can just try to make some money. Double put, well, single push actually. It's the AK pushing into halls bit dangerous to pull off on an eco don't want to leave an ak in an untradeable spot but it seems okay right now yeah, all is good that one p250 for cold zera may not even find a chance we got a little bit of damage there versus twist but plopsky's pulled into the action and phase are sent packing it's the three zero to the three three start and the immediate buyback. What's uh, what's FaZe's plan going to be? Some interesting things. It feels like there's some mind games going on with the way that the teams are executing. FaZe calling out an NIP setup, NIP calling out a FaZe setup, kind of with both of these A takes. A really great anti-eco that comes close by FaZe. Uh, like the thought behind it. It's actually a round that they could use on a full rifle with the first, the first smokes uh, on the A site and then the two underpass lurks. But here it's just a normal default from FaZe. 
out towards mid. And NIP's response is to have a player ready to push Palace and one close A ramp. It's actually not bad for the CTs. So we can see four leaning towards A. Denying vision. Rain may very well choose to take up position in connector. And Hompus's grenade with a little bit of spam definitely does enough to confirm their rate on the other side. But oh he goes for the reload at the worst possible moment. Oh, and oh. still, that's a kind of a ridiculous headshot. Oh, oh, and another through the triple box. Rez, solid stuff here from the depths of A. Five versus two is where phase are left. And again, they will just try to clamor into the bomb site. You know, last time we saw the ninjas not give them anything, no window of an opening. However, right now they do have the chance, but Nock apparently putting up no scopes versus Brokey and that second op swings. FaZe gonna lose the lead as ninjas take it by one. Man, oh, that reload too. And that was after they made the decision to push through Connector. This could have got ugly, but man, the reactions there from Rez to blast Rain as the second player crossing, not even in vision by the time he shoots. Just goes for the flick through the box. Just beautiful stuff by him as they're trying to break into the site. Yeah, it's another pretty good setup though out the gate from NIP and FaZe will now lean towards B on this round. A couple of flashes, just trying to fanatic it basically. Ooh, nice and A little bit of a flying dink there and the damage is fantastic. Obviously just running through the fire is never a good way to keep yourself alive. But they try to fluster the CTs and nobody seems to budge. Ninjas, they are coming into their own form here on Mirage. So far, so good. Chewing through the anti-ecos. This has looked pretty simple for the ninjas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, lots of good things to say so far about the CT side. And uh, the, the gambles that they're making and the gambles that FaZe are making seem less less effective. Would have would like to see that uh, anti-force up round on one of these rifle rounds and see how it works out. That first layer execute plus the connect, late connector presence and see how NIP respond. Oh, nice, Brokey. And he dodges back into the cover as well. So shutting down Hompus on the push and dodging the potential for the trade frag. Now Plopski is going to probably try to flash over here to get Rez out of underpass, but Rain, he's ready for it. And the flashbang hits Rez, so... He made it harder than ever. Knock inside of the palace, grabs one frag, falls back towards triple stack, and he's going to rotate over. But what's FaZe's plan here? Looks like that bomb pushes into palace as Twist goes extending around on ramp. He could very well cut off all of the support for this bomb carrier. Yeah, he could live by himself in this spot if he gets a kill. It depends if the trade comes in. Double peek on the ramp, but yeah, one's late. Bomb in the halls. Oh, smoke to help out as well. Yeah, the CTs, they have not rotated back to help him. It's an interesting spot here for NIP. They could get mid-rounded hard. Might come down to Brokey. He's uh, fallen scoped. No, he's not going to unscope here. Doesn't look like. Knowing that there was a player on ramp, though, do they think that there's only that one man on A? Would have made sense to have had a second defender over here, but they're still staying heavier towards B. And I think B Mass, him selling this fake, it's only going to solidify the ninjas on the B site. It could pull Twist over, but it seems like he seems a little wary of the palace play, and he lets the first one out. However, the smoke now, it's meant to block off his vision, but instead he blocks off the bomb. It has been picked back up and denied a second time. Twist, his patience pans out over on that A site. It's a sixth round for the ninjas. Yeah, it's kind of a juvenile fake. You know, they just attempted to make some information, but didn't commit a person to it. Couldn't afford to really in the 3v3. So this round's all about Twist. He's not, you know, I, you know, you can credit him for not moving, but at the same time, he doesn't really have a reason to move with two teammates alive and no bomb spotted. Like that would be foolish, right? So that's 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 uh, good of him to sit there, but not surprising. GG sniper diff. NIP just got four op kills on train, both could and brokey, seven and thirteen respectively. Individually got more than that on the gun, huh? Yeah, and we it was at CT side where Cold and Brokey almost every round was like two and three kills on some of these rifle rounds with the op. It definitely had tremendous impact on like the 
outcome of that half. The presence of the ops alone fit. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's just it's just the one AK on Bimas. Bimas, Bimas. Good collection of grenades though. So we'll see if Faze can put the set piece to good work on the A site. No close defense, nobody forcing themselves onto the ramp, nobody underneath the palace, just knock back on tickets. Oh my god, he just waits and waits and waits. And then of course it's poor rain to get cut out of the equation. So there is still four T's trying to push their way onto this A site. Knock has a smidgen of a gap and he still manages to soften up Brokey. So much so that Twist's sidearm can take him down. But a deep T smoke meant to cut off the jungle players is what Beamass now uses to move himself forward. So his AK-47 could be the difference maker. He gets oh. that second frag and now he's turning his attention back over towards the ticket but he's gonna get flanked out by Hompus. Hoppus making the difference until Nico. Well, he's moved forward and he got his hands onto the off. A deagle as well to try and play with. The bomb's so far gone, but the ninjas, they're gonna stick this knock on top of it. Defused through. Ninjas taking seven. That was a little bit too scary. Matt, I love how Hoppus is always on this lurk. This big flank comes into play. It thinks, you think because of Bimas's play on the A site that, uh, they actually have a chance, but of course the lurk comes in. And that got scary. It looked like that kind of round where Nico put together the eagle kill and the op kill and clutch it out. But the ninjas used their utility so well there. The HE to drop on his head, the flash to get him out of vision, the smoke down to obscure any of the points of reference to allow for the plant. Yeah, everything worked out well. Rain, lots of damage done. Right out the start of this round onto mid control. They're pushing hard for connector. It's going to be heard. But it's just, go. can it be dealt with? Yeah, wow, they split up too. They've dealt fast connector and ladder room control. Wow, Hyampus gets caught off guard instantly, Thanks. and Rain gets his frag. They split open the map from the middle on both sides. Yeah, and it's looking really good here for FaZe Clan, looking to break through the spree of victories for Ninjas. Knock, turning his attention back, dodging the shots from Palace, but now he's inside of the flames. He's going to extinguish oh. that. Actively cutting off Beamass, who has made sound. So Knock, he has a read on this situation, and there's nobody coming in behind Ramp to deal with him. So he could very well be a problem oh. for the T side. He's drawing them in now. And with their attention turned away from Ticket, that's what could prime Plopsky to go in for his duel. But instead, he's cut back by Brokey. So Knock, still having to clutch this on his own. He's gonna finally miss a shot and Cold Zera punishes him for it. Twist the last man up, nowhere near this bomb site as it's planted. And if he even moves five feet forward, Nico's gonna grab him. Man, what a shame. That was such a beautiful round from Knock. Although FaZe, in, in the default, they win the connector control and ladder control at the same time. Knock uses his smoke in such a way. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Toyed with. Of course, get that one tap kill. But Nock uses his smoke perfectly. He blocks off. He doesn't panic. He walks out to the side a little bit, drops the smoke to his right. It blocks off the player peeking from stairs. Makes him scared to actually peek stairs because it's hard to tell if you have the advantage. And it allows him to also, if the sandwich drop comes in, to win that duel and a player crossing left so he can fight halls. It's really, really hard to deal with. And kind of a shame that he missed that, uh, that last shot under balcony one of those rounds that uh, is, is beautifully played from a positional perspective on top of a great op frag. Whoa, knock a Ooh. little out of position, but still, what a great adjustment. Him and Twist both in with an op frag apiece. Rez, he's trying to turn his attention away from the gunfight as Hompus comes in from Ticket, and that's the 4v2. Ninjas in pajamas, double man advantage, putting FaZe Clan back into a difficult spot. It looks like they want to fall back from ramp, but they're also firing shots both from Palace and the ramp room. So they're just going to let them know exactly what's up. FaZe Clan, they want to fight. They want the aim duels. Nico, oh yes, taps right into Hampus. Sure, the damage has been done. FaZe Clan barely alive, but they are still fighting. Nico will go to his final breath. And as they have now got it into the two versus two, realizing there's 50 seconds left, they actually have open options. Dude, it's just the health. Oh, it makes it hard to it makes it hard to do a lot. The only the Nico, he doesn't even want to commit too hard to that fight. Just tried to get a free frag if possible. Broke in the one on two with an op. You know, it's it's unlikely for sure. But 
it looks like he'll here he'll get a free plant and he can play anywhere he wants so let's see in this mind work brookie what are you going to attempt and it seems like he's hoping there was one on the site all that'll do maybe is drag the species closer well it looks like they don't even properly hear the plant yeah the number number seven man is still over on a so Brokey's going to take that position Whoa. back on bench. He's going to peek into the door, and he is no more. Plopsky finishing that one. It was minimal health there for Brokey. But considering at one point in this very same round, we had him and Nico in that two versus four on A, completely outnumbered and by what looked like it, stuck in a gunfight. They did a good job of making something out of nothing, and it's at least a bit more money for FaZe Clan. But Ninja's doubling up the round count. This 8-4 lead on the CT side, that's pretty big. Yeah, Nico's looking terrifying, and he's not even having, like, an unbelievable series so far. I mean, he had, like, almost 90 ADR last match. It's just, you know, for Nico, he's, he's in the same realm as, you know, Device and Simple. So, him to do that is, 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 is almost expected, sadly. Rain once again, early damage, trying to get out mid. Break grenade's Ooh. been placed, and Hampus pulls off this push one more time. He's going to double it back, immediately looking to hang on to this five versus four. It costs them barely any utility. It costs them zero health. He's yeah, really stopping the problem HP. before it starts. Yep. A big time. But Nico, he's been causing here. problems once the rounds have already started. So let's see if he can crack open a couple more heads here. It's being watched by Plopsky. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. You're serious? He, he just swings boosts. right he in. Too. Yeah. Now it's going to be Rez at bat, dropping bomb, and falling back beneath the palace. So even with Nico doing the unthinkable, it's still not easy here for FaZe. Rez, he's going to get pressured and pummeled by Utility, taking a little bit of damage. Nice adjustment there to the head of Rain. Very quick execution as Hompus takes another one. This 13th round looking like it belongs to the ninjas. Brokey, a little bit desperate here, shooting through the floorboards and pushed back on his op. Mm, another beautiful hold from Rez. And I'm seeing shades of golden from Hampus as the IGL. He's, he plays quite aggressively, goes for these big, long flanks. He trusts his aim, even though that's not technically why he, why he's on this team. It's not that he's a bad player. Of course, he's not. Uh, obviously, very high frag in IGL from what we're seeing right now. But uh, yeah, he, he does a lot of these things by himself, which is kind of like golden in some way, which is kind of interesting. Brokey, don't get that exit before time ticks down and he is an endangered species being hunted right now does not want to lose the op by any means <coughs> oh, excuse me bless you thank you great movement from res dropping down like a slinky on a staircase Super clean, super smooth, and he's been crispy on A. Even when he comes out of that smoke, a player peaks jungle, instant headshot. Nico running down to the connector already. Look at the confidence of Nico here, just boiling over. And with some of the headshots he's hit on that AK, I don't blame him. So I'm very excited to see what he can do with this AWP. Looking to jackknife the A site, but clearly FaZe not playing too fast because that bomb's still back towards spawn. Just spreading across the map to start. And they've actually gotten some pretty significant control of it all. Inside of the top of connector, we have Nico down at the bottom of mid, completely clear. And it's not like we've got Plopsky back on the market bench, just kind of holding murder hole either. This is a lot of room for FaZe to work with, but they haven't figured that out yet. Man, it's always scary when teams are leaving this window open because... Yeah, they're they're living in Nip's head rent free right now. Twist spotting from CT spawn. They have to come back and watch it. It's dangerous for Plopsky. You saw how he died last round. Whoa, that misses Twist. I don't even know how that looked like it was directly on him. Three in connector though. The information is there, and so the repeat's actually in. There's a chance that he gets a kill. Oh, but he gets caught on the fallback. Nico outplays Twist. Let's see if Rain can do one. Spots the body behind the default, so yes, sir. He executes it with ease. The answer back is knocked, done and dusted. He was trying to hit him from the Tetris, but now with 20 seconds left, it's Plopsky and Hoppus two versus four, and they drop the bomb. Oh boy. 
Hoppus, he's gonna get shut down by Vmas. So Plopsky with everything to do here, switching over to the sniper. He's gonna expose himself a bit over towards the ramp, and Nico shuts him down. It doesn't matter if it's AKs or ops. Nico's hitting headshots today. You gotta appreciate that Nico. He waits on this angle for the entire time. That's a beautiful shot, but he was so patient just to sit there the entire time that Twist was fighting. Trust his teammates to try to bait out the shot on the left side. And again, I think they're praying on, crying on, or yeah, they're praying on the fear of not having window room control by NIP. I think that was pretty scary for them. Twist had to go back to CG spawn to make sure they weren't getting flanked on top of finding a new spot. And that's why this map control is so important for the T's. Rain lucky to be alive. Yeah, dude, Rez has a voracious appetite today. He has been doing so much for NIP on the A site. gets burned out of position. Rez can still hold above. And oh. oh my god, he's not watching that smoke. So Rain, he sprints right through, even with minimal health, able to get one. Then Nico trades positions with him, and BMAS is gonna close that gap. He's got the bomb, and it's gonna go down. Four versus three now. Cold Zera right on the side of the stairs. He just gut stuffs twist through what was the fading smoke. So Nock and Plopsky, all that's left. And they peek right into the sandwich hold from Cold Zera. He is looking crisp. And Plopsky, well, another post-plant retake attempt. It is the final round of the half, so he's gonna have to give it his all. And nobody seems to want to face him. He has three bullets when he goes for the peak. And leading by three rounds, the ninjas in pajamas, still not favored by the Betway odds. But considering the way they were dismantled on train, I think we may have a game on our hands. Don't forget that it took them three maps versus Vitality to get here. And now, well now, they've got a chance. It's the second pistol coming in hot. We've got tons of flashbangs, and by tons, I mean three. Here for the ninjas at B. Yeah, could certainly be more than you need. Okay. Start to go over. Knock. No cross. Yeah, they're out fast. Real quick. Lickety split. Two headshots instantly here for the ninjas. Let's see if the CTs can clamor back. Not good so far. Everybody goes down with just the one kill on BMAS. So Rain crossing over through the spam of the market window. It's gonna need the most beautiful one versus four you have ever seen. And he's just getting peppered from all directions. He's brought the salt. Rain peeks out and that is it. Hompus ready for the headshot. Ninjas in pajamas taking 10 double digits early for the T side. I like the approach on the execute. The smoke takes a long time to land in front of the window, but it's just meant for the rotator. So they decide not to let it. They decide not to let it plume first. Execute with the flashbangs, and I think when you see the smokes, you might pull out some counter utility. They end up eating the flashbangs. NIP take it quick, and yeah, again, B is just being very susceptible these days to rounds like that. Once you get out, that's just when it gets terrifying. And. Uh, this round, phase have decided to stack four on a connector. Nip approaching the low ground, but yo, it's easy for Hantis. Hell yeah. He's just going to keep this one moving as well. A little smoke grenade for jungle as his teammates decide to pinch out from ramp. So hitting this A site from all directions and Brokey knows he's got to go. That scout and MP9 can still be saved. Why not use it in the third? Yeah, they win this clean. It'll be a recycled couple of guns. NIP, they went ahead and bought up mostly AKs, though, knowing the CT side force was coming in. So that it's not, it's actually great for them, of course. You know, they don't lose anybody. Um, they would like to have gotten more kills with the MAC 10, of course, but they can weaponize Twist as an entry fragger versus full guns versus pistols, whatever it is. Where again, we're seeing this kind of four AK, four rifle, MAC 10 by come in more and more often, especially on Inferno. But of course it goes for all the same standards of the MAC-10 apply across all maps. You know, you, got, you have more move speed. You're encouraged to run and shoot at the same time. You literally can jump and shoot at the same time. You're only a thousand value target with your armor and your nades, you know, 3000, but 
there's and you're and it, you're incentivized to keep running in, cre- keep creating space because you want to get as close to your targets as possible. So there's some benefits to the Mac 10 that the AK doesn't even have. Variety, the spice of life. And we can apply that to Counter Strike nowadays. Real fun. We get the flashbangs through the smoke on Catwalk. There is a gap just above that, so they start to shoot through Connector, but it looks like a second smoke pops, and B-Mask, well, he wants to go to the top of mid. He actually cuts off one of the riflemen, and that's gonna be a great upgrade from the MP9. Now that P250 on B, coupled with the scout, hasn't done too much, but Brokey does connect one, and he sees another, but he can't do anything about Rez. Good thing for B-Mask, he's doubled back from the top of mid, and now we've got the FaZe Clan in a prime position, but Hompus starts to claw this one back under control and it's going to take a wrap back through market all three cts have decided to come through this position and hoppus he almost lines them up he does substantial damage to rain but plopsky maintains a chance for nip in the clutch he's looking all around him but he doesn't think for a moment that both of these members of phase clan are still inside the market how do they bounce out Looks like they're just going to run out dry. They don't have the utility to deny his vision. Plopsky swings wide, still watching flank, still not suspecting b to be all the way back on market, but now he may know. b crouches right oh. in, and he takes that headshot. He takes the 3K, and he takes phase a seventh round. Oh, it's an entire read there from Bemis. Here he comes out crouched, holding on to this one specific angle, knowing Plopsky's going to want to take this fight, and the shadow advantage is there for Plopsky. He still wins the duel. I can't believe they actually pulled it out on a round like this. It looked at, so good at the beginning, but of course, you know, this MP9 kill is enormous. The scout frag's coming in, shutting down mid control, and Plopsky, he has another thing coming. You know, that's a fight he was, he was happy to take. You take that fight 10 times out of 10. Face pull it back after losing the first force up. Oh, but an opening off frag goes the way of Twist. It looks like there was a bit of a shoulder bait that came in, but Twist did not bite. He might not have been there in time. So, what are the consequences? Mid is kind of cracked open. Yeah, yeah, puts Phase in a more vulnerable position. Ooh, nice. Coldzera able to catch one in the window, so something for FaZe here in the 19th round. While Nico still stares down through A, Twist could find timing here. Coldzera, nice flick shot. Just through the tippity top of the smoke. It's all falling onto the shoulders of the new kid on the block. And it looks like he might save. So Ninja's gunning for that five round lead on the T side, looking to reverse sweep this series to keep themselves going. In Dreamhack Master Spring 2020. He's being pressured from all directions. And down he goes at the end. So no weapons saved here for the CT side. And as said, a five round lead. Twist has been such a clutch opper. I mean, literally winning clutches mostly with the op, but also these important mid round frags. Here's a third one through the smoke, barely spotting the head of Cold Zera on that jump up could have easily died and no one would have bat an eyelash but yeah twist is hitting all the important shots nip 12 rounds they're kind of through the thick of it here they they're going to move on to 13 most likely it's an eco for phase phase have only won in eco so far this half this is definitely still nip's game to lose i don't want to drop any kills that they can avoid i'm holding on to pushes on all parts of the map now Knock almost rewarded with an A ramp push. Looks like he's got the other staircase to work with. Mm. So close. Here he, here he jumps and gets shot out of the sky. No, okay. Yeah, he's going to extend upwards. He's a second one as well. All the while, Rez taking bodies off of Catwalk. So slowly but surely, the ninjas gearing up towards that B bomb site. But two frags coming off of A. I mean, they have options fully open. Just need to dodge these deagles for the last 50 seconds. Yeah, we know FaZe are going to play very reactively on their CT side. They're super fluid. It's really hard to read their setup sometimes because of how much each of their players moves a lot from position to position. And um, that's why it'll be an unknown quantity for Nip moving into this next round as to how FaZe are going to try to play it. And oh, Rogi, nice. No headshot for him, yeah. And I mean, yeah, it's just just to reiterate, you know, ninjas, they don't they don't have the same level of talent as, as face, but they certainly have enough to keep up, especially if anybody's having a slightly off day. 
the the frag count is is quite high for some of their important players. Cool to see Hampus up there, twenty and twelve already. That's the Coney scoreline. Oh, Brokey. Okay. Just gets into cover. Nico actually spams one through the smoke, so it looked like Brokey was going to be in a bit of a tricky position, but Nico helps him out. And Rez, well, he's just going to crab walk right out from ramp, just executes rain in the depths of the firebox. Rez trying to keep eyes above the staircase here. Bomb on his back, and he only has 10 HP left to work with. I mean, that just goes to show you how close it was for rain however the ninjas they fall silent and they do still have that insurance policy in mid plopsky he could find timing through the window nobody's actually keeping eyes on him but there is a player in nico going down to check perhaps flirting with the idea of middle or a plopsky's going to hear the audibles he definitely just heard brokey move back what do they know from this we've got enough utility to like wait i actually really like this from nip the op is a problem though, and he's gone. They get caught off guard by this. Nice oh, jump. nice jump! Yeah. Pompus finds that great timing. Shaves one off of the ticket. Oh, broke. Now plops literally to the fire. He's gonna come in from connector, and they've cleared out the ticket. So knowing that somebody had left, probably serves for Plopsky to come in here on the numbers. But the waiting great game was fantastic for ninjas. And, you know, we were kind of waiting for that trigger. Somebody had to do something in order for them to take it. And it's Hompus jumping on top of Firebox to peel a player off of the ticket. He never saw that one coming. And it is a beautiful. I love Ninjas that. And pajamas can we, doubling up. Can we see what that looked like from Brokey's perspective? I have a feeling he was flashed in spawn. I didn't see it. But if he, you know, he took 100 damage to a Molotov in CT. And if that was a combination, I mean, that's the perfect way to deal with an opera. That would have been beautiful. But I'm not sure how he lost all hundred health to that uh that in that Molotov or incendiary alone. But yeah, I love love how NIP they press up, they take a really scary amount of map control within the A site, but they don't overextend. They force FaZe to make a mistake. And again, FaZe, they like to play fluid. They move around a lot, they seek out information, they try not to play scared on CT side. And as soon as they do, they get punished. This is a That's pure good. AK versus M4 situation. He jump up versus cold, and here's Brokey. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, he just has no white. I mean, okay. Well, no excuses for Brokey there. Not exactly sure how that happens. He could hear the Molotov the entire time. He was just trying to slightly move out of it to get one kill. Maybe survive with one HP. Probably thought he was dead to Palace no matter what. Yeah, really wanted a kill on Palace. Oh, but another one. Hoppus. Good for the headshots. Good for peeling the players off of the A site. Nico's spray is great. And Cold Zera, well, his Deagle has also found a victim here in the 22nd round. So FaZe Clan, they've got a man advantage here to keep ninjas off of securing 15. But we saw the ninjas slow down in a mid-round just previously. They could very well do it yet again. Cold Zera gonna take a shot through the side of the door, but Twist extends. He didn't expect Cold to peek back knowing he was low HP and they will be able to trade it. So a two versus four turn two versus three. Options open as b -Mass pushes B. Knock, he's gonna catch him. Headshot connects. And now that bomb carrier, well, he's kind of stuck still in mid. So let's see if Knock can do anything else here on the B site. Maybe he draws all the rotations. Maybe that bomb slow on the A. 40 seconds left over. He gets another kill up close. Last member for phase is Nico. 18 and 15 peaks and oh. shut down. Knock, the absolute difference maker. He had a stellar showing on train and he doesn't slow down on Mirage. 21 frags. Yeah, he welcomes himself into the 20 club with this round and it's an important one at that. I mean, this could have come close for sure. Nice heads up play. He has great awareness about exactly where the positions will be in these in these weird, awkward mid rounds where people are lurking around. It's always, always keeping a great inventory and, and uh, we're, we're seeing an auto sniper out of twists on the A ramp. Op shot from Nico top Damn. mid. Whoa, knock is gone. Is this so auto getting dropped? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Rain. Jesus. Swinging wide on the staircase. Double M4A1S headshots. And that's what you get for buying an auto sniper. You know, karma. You usually, yeah, I mean, you almost always die in an undignified way when you buy an auto sniper. 
it looks like maybe NIP are having too much fun. I mean, it's a strong weapon to spam CT spawn, like, no kidding. I mean, I hon honestly, you know, with how teams, how good teams are getting, I've heard Henry talk about this. It feels like it's kind of, it's going to come back into play. I can see it. I can see it. You know, it, the only problem is it's so expensive, but it's dead accurate on no scopes. It's semi-automatic and and basically basically an AWP. I mean, two shot kill, any distance. Sure does a lot of damage. Yeah, much scarier on the on the T side though, of course. CT side. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, scarier to use, but uh, yeah. You know what's scary? Blonders, Blobsky, because he just runs through mid this round. And he's looking to catch up to some of his teammates who are showing a bit better at the moment. But Plopsky, he's in that playmaker position. Cold Zera right there. Plopsky has a great read on it. Oh, and the third. Plopsky looking to be the nail in the coffin. They're going to start wrapping around onto the B site. B mass pinned in. Empty handed knock takes him down. And Brokey, who showed us great things on train. Well, he is 9 and 16 here on Mirage, and it looks like Nip are going to take it. A convincing bounce back on their opponent's map choice. This is the 